Hi everyone, welcome to Lathe and Loom Podcast. If this is your first time stopping by, thanks so much for checking out the channel. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for um, coming back to spend a few minutes with me. Um, I just wanted to pop in here. Um, I am going to be changing over my computer setup and um, I'm afraid that the learning curve on the new software <laughs> might be more than I'm planning on. So um, I thought I would just pop in and do a quick vlog style um, episode. So minimal show notes, minimal text uh, edition. So if you'll pardon the, uh, um, the, the brevity of this one, I just kind of wanted to give an update on a few of the things that I've been working on and touch base. And um, of course, I always love hearing from you. I had a, quite a number of comments on the last video and, and good viewership. So um, I really, really appreciate you um, sharing that. If you are a subscriber, I appreciate you subscribing. If you're not, I would love it if you would um, consider hitting the uh, subscription uh, and notification. And, and always, always, I just love to hear the comments to know what you're working on, uh, what you like, what else you'd like to see, or if you have any questions for me. I can be found on Instagram also as at Loom. Uh, and on Ravelry as share 5413 and I will add that into the um, to the description um, information so um, after I got through the comfort fade cardi which you all saw <laughs> I think or maybe you haven't seen or maybe you haven't done the finished twirl on um, I don't have it uh, in this room <laughs> actually that's terrible here's a photo of the finished comfort fade cardi i um, super glad to get that one off the needle and um, it was a good project. It was a learning project. Um, I'm, I, I'm finding that I'm not sure that that raglan style just as written is good for me, but um, as I am starting to take my journey into the victory cardigan, I'm starting to understand a little bit more about the raglan construction and how to make those adjustments. So maybe without further ado, I'll just move into the whip section. Prime Whip is the um, Victory Cardigan. So this is a pattern by Corinne Tomlinson of the Woolly Thistle. And um, there is several um, of her shop actually talks about her process of knitting this as she's going through the design process. And um, I always find her um, her comments about um, fit and adjustments um, really um, interesting. So uh, when the pattern was released, I purchased a, a kit. So I am using the um, called for or the yarn that it was uh, designed with, uh, which is the um, Rama. And um, this is Rama Bams. And I'm using this in colorway uh, 400 which is this beautiful deep red. I'm super happy with it. It does have a rustic feel, but um, as I'll tell you in a minute, I, I've already blocked part of it and um, that does greatly obviously change the um, nature of the wool. So um, so I took, took my measurements and um, I know I didn't swatch, but thinking it, it, you cast on with, I'm not gonna give away the pattern, but in my size, it was less than 50 to cast on, which like having done only fingering weight <laughs> sweaters was like, oh, so exciting. Um, so I actually took it on a long weekend. I cast on the day before we went away on a long weekend. And um, I, she has, I purchased the course as well, um, which is just wonderful kind of commentary. If you, if it's a first sweater for you, Fantastic way to do it because it is literally step by step knit along with her for you know a good portion of it, um, and um, I'm hoping and you know I'm hoping I'll get some more tips about the the fit. So um, so I have um, have done that, and this is where I'm at. So I've done you know the neck and shoulder shaping. I made some um, calculations. Hope. Hopefully I have done that correctly. I did put it on last night and it's fitting very nicely to adjust for the, um, the sleeves, which is my problem. So in the Comfort Fade Cardi, I found that the back of the sweater felt too big because of course I increased the raglan to accommodate my upper arm measurement, which means the raglan was very long. So the armhole is very long. The back is very baggy. You know, the front's fine. 
Um, so I was, I, I really tried to, the way that the pattern's written and her, her discussion uh, in the course and the, and the pattern, which is very detailed, um, kind of all of a sudden I had a aha moment about how raglan shaping um, is calculated or, or maybe how I could adjust it for my, and I am getting good gauge. Um, so, um, so as I, so what I did was I, I did down to, I don't know, maybe before you start it, the, before I split for the sleeves, I guess, maybe, I think I did, I knit the first ball of yarn. That's what it is. I knit the first ball of yarn because then it was detached. I went ahead and put it on a, um, I use these little pony cords, right? Put it on a pony cord. I blocked it. So the blocking, I was about where that stitch marker is is where the first ball ran out. So I blocked it and you can see, and you, you, I think you can probably see even on the camera, you can see it's much smoother at the top. It's off, uh, obviously much softer, uh, lays out really nice. Um, and my gauge was, was, was really good. So I put it back on, kept going. And then as I got down to towards where I was gonna split for the sleeves, I started calculating. Now in hindsight, and I made a, copious amount of notes on my pattern. Um, I, um, I wish I had done that calculation a little earlier and I might have, uh, what I'm doing is I added extra increases in the arm and not on the body down till I got to the split for the sleeve. And then I'm following the pattern and the pattern she's giving some, um, hints around how to adjust for not having excess fabric in the back, how to adjust for your bust, et cetera. So, um, so I'm, I'm following that along now and really, you know, working through my numbers. I'm actually, um, at, uh, I have a number of other projects like queued up and ready to go, but um, th I'm just loving knitting. One, I'm enjoying uh, something that's a slightly larger size. I think this is a, might be a size eight needle. Uh -oh, I'll have to look, it's in the pattern whatever was called for in the pattern was fine for me, for my gauge. Um, and, um, so it's going by pretty quickly. So I knew that if I had to go back and rip out that first ball, it wasn't, you know, tragic amount of knitting. So, um, so it was a little bit of a risk. I know that's not really, but I, I also have found over time that my gauge swatch is not always what happens when I actually knit. So, um, I'm kind of liking that, that method a little bit too. It's just sort of a gamble. Um, but it's coming out nicely. The arms, uh, I have split for the arms and that is working up nicely. I'm loving, loving this color. Um, so, and uh, my steak in there. So excited about doing my next steak. So, um, so this is coming along really nice. Highly recommend it. I'm already, I told my husband this morning, I said, I think when I get done with this one, I wanna like cast on another one right away and, and edit through my notes again. And like, kind of, I feel like I want to do like two or three iterations until I get it like just, just perfect. And then I should be able to also, um, you know, do it without the stick and have a pullover. Right. So I think that's really, really cool. And then maybe you start thinking about how you can adjust the pattern and, um, in, in some other ways as, as well. So I looked at some other yarns. So I had a, a, a ordered a bunch of Holstgarn um, yarn from Denmark. And um, I noticed that in a number of patterns I've been browsing through Ravelry, a lot of folks are holding Holstgarn super soft with um, Plotolopi, like one strand of each, which is sort of interesting. So I've got some colors that coordinate and like that would probably be a nice worsted weight. So anyway, I'm sure there'll be a lot more to come on the victory cardigan. But, um, and, and I just, I want to kind of step by step. And as I go through, um, you know, kind of talk about how, how I'm finding that, um, in hopes that that's helpful for you all, uh, to learn you as well. And love to have any comments below, uh, on what you found helpful learning how to adjust, uh, raglan shaping. I've looked at a number of videos and want to do my longer podcast next time I will, um, note to that too, because I found that was really helpful. So that is the victory cardigan.
Um, in between the Comfort Fade Cardi and getting ready to cast on some other projects, I went back and gave a little bit of knitting love to my Burakal. So this is the Burakal by Marie Wallen. I am using um, Jameson and Smith yarn. Yes, all Jameson and Smith. Um, this is my, I don't know if this will show up, my color palette in here. Um, this is my lovely project bag by Karen at the Knit Nook in Moorhead City. Love these project bags. Um, I just got two more, so they'll be showing up again <laughs> with new projects. There's never enough project bags, which probably means I have too many things on the, on the needles. If that's a thing is that a thing anyway um here's about where i was last time so not a ton but i you know i am just trying to kind of consistently um get back into knitting it um again but here's where i am i'm i'm really happy with it i figured out i think and it won't really show because it's you know it'll be wrapped around the, this way um i did have a little trouble with the where the where i was changing yarns I think I figured out how to account for that. And I actually started, it's right side out now, but I actually started knitting this um, inside out to help even out my floats. I don't really have a big issue with my floats being tight because I'm a fairly loose knitter, but um, I had to do, oh, the Comfort Fade Cardi is reverse stockinette. And so when I got to the sleeves, because I prefer to work on um you know my nine inch circular needles or small circular i think i actually was using a um, a little bit longer cable um i flipped it inside out so that i could knit rather than purl the sleeve even though it doesn't really bother me but i mean i think my floats look really nice do you think i'm kind of proud of those <laughs> so here's my messy where it's cut but i'm like eh, nobody's gonna see that so um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm leave, weaving it in some and a lot of them I'm just tying it because I can't really be bothered. <laughs> but, um, but I do notice that every time I sit down to work on this, I just really, really enjoy that. So that is for the year of Marie Wallen um, Knit Along that is being run by the lovely Nikki of um, Knitting with Cat Hair Podcast. And um, that runs, it was a year long knit along. It started August 1st. So will run until August 1st um, this year. So if you have not watched that or if you've not watched her podcast, definitely a great one to catch up on um, and love to have you join in. There's lots of great Marie Wallen um, knits. A lot of folks are doing the, the really gorgeous sweaters. Um, I stuck with something a little bit simpler, but I think I'm going to really get a lot of use out of that. So excited about that. One other whip in progress. I have been working on this pair of socks that I ripped out last last year, but have this very nice yarn um, from Sheep Dip Dye Works and the Knit Nook colorway. It's for their second anniversary. So I am, this is, I'm just doing my plain vanilla sock pattern, which is for me a, um, I guess, slightly rounded wedge toe straight stockinette I do a shadow wrap heel um, and then this time I, I'm going to try these are going to be sort of ankle but I'm doing a long ribbed cuff so you can see a little bit that ribbing on there um, so that is actually one of two and they're about I sort of do a concurrent knitting um, on, you know, they're on their own little needles, but I kind of try to keep them more or less. This guy's the one that's the catch up. I try to kind of work on them each so they get done about the same time and never really had second sock syndrome, but I find it helpful just mainly to remember what I did. Um, so, and so, and then I use the stitch markers to keep up. So, so those should be off the needles fairly soon. I'm not I haven't really prioritized them. I really prioritized getting finished with the Heart of Glass tea that you saw in last episode, the Comfort Fade Cardi that <laughs> you should have seen on this episode, but only get a photo. If you have been around for a few episodes, a 
I had done a pair of um, shorty socks out of some merino um, that I had dyed with avocado dye. And I just had leftovers from doing my daughter's weekender sweater and I had knit up a pair of shorty socks for myself. Knowing of course that merino being a very, um, I guess, soft wool um, is not really hard wearing for socks. So um, if you follow me on, on Instagram, I have darned them several times now, um, but they're kind of at the end of their life, <laughs> life cycle, I'm afraid. So I do need a new pair of kind of slipper socks. And um, so I wanted to try doing, um, you know, more like DK weight and I put together, pardon the crinkling here a minute, I put together some of my sock scraps. So this was from my um, Soul Sister socks. This is from the Wild Bees socks. This is from a pair I made for my mom. So I just put together, um, this is um, uh, Felicity Yarn Studios Haystacks. Because every time I need some different yarns to go together, that's the one yarn I can pull in that like makes it all work. It, it's the most excellent yarn for that. But um, anyway, I had been looking at color palette socks and I, um, I, I did look at the pattern, um, but not, I have, not any time recently. I just sort of had in my head kind of more or less what I thought it was. And I'm holding these yarns double because they're fingering weight. And um, so I'm just, I cast on the toe with just uh, undyed yarn that I had. And then I've done that first round and then I'm doing this little um, uh, seed stitch detail uh, in between. So I'm on the second color up there and um, they are delightfully squishy. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. And I did, so with my um, last pair I had cast on 48 and I found that they're too big. So I did 44 on this one. So I'll be interested to see, um, same size needle, um, US one, 2.25 millimeter. I'll be interested to see how that goes, but this is just a kind of fun side, uh, project. So next a little bit of spinning. Um, I have been kind of spinning in the background, although I have been prioritizing my knitting, but I've been spinning up this lovely braid of fiber, uh, that came from Marina of Pineapple Yarn. So she has a great podcast. I really enjoy. She's got, does a little spinning, a uh, little weaving. Obviously she's a indie dyer. Um, and this was from her. August 2021 Mystery Fiber Club. And I picked it looking for something. I wanted to try some of her colors. This is, as you know, well out of my wheelhouse, but I am loving watching how the different colors come in. And you'll see if I pop in a photo of the bobbin here that I'm spinning on, um, how just how pretty, pretty that looks. So I'm really excited. I'm doing this as a um, two ply and I, split the braid down the middle. Yes. And then I'm spinning one from one end and one from the other end, I believe is how I decided. I, I tied the opposite end so I wouldn't mix it up, but I think that's what I decided. But this is combed uh, top, which is uh, South Down. It was 100 uh, grams of South Down. I had not spun South Down before. Uh, so um, I am finding that very nice, has a very nice elasticity. It's, it spins up very nicely and I'm going to do it as a two ply. So um, I, I'm looking forward to that. It, it apparently is low felting and should be a durable choice for socks, mittens and cold weather accessories. So I'm, I'm going to maybe try some socks with it because I would love to find just an all natural. This is non super wash, if I didn't say that, uh, yarn or uh, fiber. Um, so encourage you to check her out. She is at pineappleyarn.com and she is on Instagram at, at pineapple yarn. So that's all I've got today. I really appreciate you stopping by um, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again in a couple of weeks. Please leave a comment and let me know what you're doing, uh, what projects you're working on, what you have fun coming up, what you're casting on next, and um, I will um, talk to you again um, soon. Happy knitting, spinning, dyeing, and weaving.
Bye, everybody.